Welcome everybody, Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, 4th Street Baseball. And we're going to need 2D6, 2D10, and 1D20. And uh, we are playing a game uh, from 2019, April 3rd. It's the Mets at Marlins. And it's DeGrom versus Trevor Richards. Leading off for the Mets is Nimmo in left field, Alonzo batting second at first base, and Cano, second baseman, batting third. Come forward to the cleanup hitter in right field, Davis, J.D. Davis at third base. Batting fifth, batting sixth is Keon Broxton, the center fielder. Then you got Rosario, the shortstop. Batting seventh, batting eighth is Thomas Nito, the catcher, and DeGrom batting ninth. Let's get started. Let's throw some dice. Right, the first thing we're going to do is check the matchup versus a lefty right on Trevor Richards card. And we see that the 2D10 gave us a 98. That's going to be a ballpark result. So that's an exciting part of this game, which I really like to show you how to use. And for that, we're going to make a couple of changes. We're going to make a couple of moves here. And we're going to slide this out and we're going to bring this in here. And we're going to throw some dice. So this is your ballpark card from Miami, 2019. So there's a, bit, a lot of work being put into this game. And uh, I rolled a 23. The 2D10 say 23. So we're going to look along here and find 23. And it falls within 20 to 25. So it's a D. So we're looking at the D um, area. And then we're going to look at the 13, which is the D20. And we have to also check uh, Nimmo's power rating. And Nimmo's power rating versus a right-hander. Trevor Richards is a right-hander. He's a zero power rating, so we don't add anything to that 13. And a 13 will, under D, will drop in. And I'll show you there. There it is. 13 is going to be a base hit. And that could, he could go for two um, so against the left fielder, but uh, we are going to keep it at a single. So we're going to run first to off the ballpark result. And let's bring our field back in and set up our cards again. There we go, so you can see everything. And this is a series, this is another in the continuing series of 4th Street Baseball. Let's slide these over a little bit. There we go. That's better. All right, here goes uh, next batter. Nimmo's on it first, and next batter is Pete Alonso. And that's going to be a 53. This time it's versus a righty, and a 53 is going to fall within the 49 to 94 range, which is a pitcher matchup. We rolled a 7, and against a righty, he's going to be a minus 1. And that's going to help us figure out what kind of a pitch it is. And a minus one says two to six and a 12. So uh, we have a 15. So that's going to be a breaking ball to Alonzo, a six. Versus a right-handed pitcher, we look at Alonzo's versus the pitcher. 14 minus six is an eight. And um, our D20 is, is a 15. So that's going to be above that. And finally, we're going to look at the at the 7 to see. So it's going to be above that. It's going to be on the pitcher's card versus a righty. And a 7 is going to be a strikeout. So I should have looked at the, uh, the 2D6 to figure out um, if it was going to be a breaking ball or a fastball. Just want to clarify that. So it's going to be a strikeout. Alonso swings and misses. One away, runner on first, and here is Robbie Cano. All right, and it's going to be a 36 versus a lefty. Let's, and a 36 versus a lefty is going to be 36 to 40 to the left fielder. So the left fielder for the Marlins is Granderson, who's a three. Hit to the outfield. So we're going to look at the outfield rating. 16 minus 3 is a 13. 
it falls 12, so it's going to be red off canal. And then we add the two D6. It's going to be a 10. And that's going to be a 70 plus when it falls on zero, you add the position it was hit to, and that was left field. So it tees, that's a 7. So it's a 77, and that is going to read the result of that. A 77. We got a chart here. Just look at 77. There it is. 76 to 77 is a deep fly out. Runner on second may advance, but there's nobody on second, so we don't have to worry about that. All right. So two out. And here's Michael Conforto. He's another lefty, so we're going to look at the matchup on the left side. Throw our dice. And that's a 41, 36 to, uh, no, 41 to 46 is to the center fielder's, center fielder's Brinson of five. So we're going to look 16 minus five here in the outfield rating, 16 for Conforto. So a 16 minus five is an 11 and the D20 is a seven. So we will read it off Conforto and we add a 2D6. That's a six and that is going to be a 20. It's a 20 plus the position of the center fielder. He's, a, uh, he's an 8. Uh, the left field is a 7. The right field is a 9. And that sort of thing. His position number. So that's going to be a 28. And on the chart, a 28 is a drive. And that's going to be And the center fielder, Brinson, is going to play the... There it is. Let me get that so you can see it. 20, 28. There it is. Uh... 28 falls within 27 29 that's going to be a double Brinson plays the carom and now with two out we're going to try to score demo we're just going to throw that uh, anything 10 or less I don't even have to look it's going to be an automatic score a 10 so uh, digging for home is Nemo and he scores and into second base with an RBI a two out RBI double is Michael Conforto. So the Mets are on the board right away for DeGrom, which is highly unusual. And here's J.D. Davis, fifth place batter for the Mets. So Trevor Richards will look on the right side this time. On his right matchup. So we're looking for the matchup to see. And we're going to look at the 13. 13 matchup is 11 to 19. is going to be the second baseman. Second baseman is Starling Castro. He's a five. So we look versus infield, 17 minus 5 is a 12. See, it's uh, infield right here, 17. You subtract the defensive rating that I have written down on my right. Uh, Castro is a 5, so 17 minus 5 is a 12. And you look at the D20, that falls below that, so it's going to be read off of the batter column versus that infielder. If the infielder had one, then we would read it off the, the uh, infielder's column. And everybody has a defensive column. So uh, we're going to read that, and we're going to add the 2D6. Uh, you can see that's a 10. I don't know if you can see it totally, but it is a 10. So we're going to go down to 10, and it's going to be a 60. Falls on a 0, so we are going to add. We're going to add the second baseman's position, which is a 4. So it's going to be um, 10 is a 70. So it's going to be a 74. Oh, no, wait a second. Uh, it's a 60, a 64, excuse me. And a 64 is a hard ground ball. You can see that there, hard ground ball to second baseman Castro to end the inning. So Davis grounds out, and that is one half of an inning. The Mets pick up a run on a couple of hits. They lead it one nothing, and here come the Marlins. Remember that Jacob DeGrom is on the mound for the Mets today, so he is pretty stingy. So any runs that the Mets pick up are going to be trouble for the Marlins to get back. So here's Curtis Granderson leading off. He's a lefty, so we're looking at the lefty side matchup for the ground. And that's going to be a 0-8, and that's going to fall to the catcher. So it's a catcher opportunity. And the catcher, Nito, is a 6. And that's going to be considered the infield. Right? That's going to be considered the infield versus a righty 
So it's a 12 minus 6 is a 6. We roll a 9. So it is going to be off the catcher. Catcher Nitto's card or Nitto's card. And we're going to look. Uh, what do we have? A 7. So let's look for Nitto. There he is. Nitto, a 7 is a 9. So that's a potential error. So we have to add 10 to that 9. It's 19. If we roll a d20 and it's not a 20. Anything in 19 or less is going to be an error on Nito. And it is a 20, so there's no error on Nito. He makes the play. So it's a... I guess it's a G2. It could be a pop-up. It could be... Uh, it's not clear what exactly it is. Um, it's a possible error. So there must be a rule somewhere that says to the catcher, it could be a foul ball, it could be an error, but it wasn't an error, so we don't have to worry about that. And here comes Ryan Anderson. So Anderson is right, so we're looking on the right side. And that is a 55 on the right side. Actually, you know what? Uh, I was correct before because I looked on the left side and that was an 8. So this time it's a 55 and that's going to fall within the pitcher. Uh, pitcher batter matchup. And we're going to check it out. If it, is it, uh, it's going to be a fastball. So it's a 10. So where's the right-handed pitcher? 15 minus 10 is going to be a 5. But we roll a 15. So that's going to be off the Grom. Most likely, if it ends up being off the pitcher, especially a pitcher like the Grom, you're going to see a strikeout. We add the 2d6. It's a 5. And that is a 43 is always a strikeout. So that's the first strikeout of the day for... Jacob DeGrom, and next is Neil Walker. He's a lefty, so we'll be looking for the matchup on the left side of DeGrom's card. And we're looking for the result of the 2d10, and that's a 0, 6. And a 0, 6 is to the pitcher, so it's a ball that's hit to the pitcher, so we're looking at DeGrom's defensive rating is a 5. And we're looking at a ball that's hit to the infield. 15 minus 5 is 10. And the D20 is a 9. So that's going to be read off of Neil Walker's card. And we're going to add the 2D6. And you can see that's a 7. So we're going to read. And that's going to be a, an 11, which is a ground ball up the middle. And through into center field for the first hit of the day for the Marlins. So Neil Walker singles and he's on a first and next is Starlin Castro. Castro's a righty so we're going to check the matchup on DeGrom's right side and it's a 17. 17 falls right on the second baseman. Second baseman is Cano. He's a four. Hit to the infield is a 15 minus four is an 11. So then we look at the d20 it's a 20 so it will be off Cano. We will look at Cano's and we're going to look at a 3 on Cano, and a 3 on Cano is a 3, so it's going to be a 13. Um, let me see if you can see that. There it is. Uh, so it's going to be a 13. You can see the 3 is a 3, and that's 13 or less. It's going to be an error. So we're going to roll and see what happens. And it is, uh, it's an error on Cano. So runners on first and second. E4. So both teams, oh no, only the Mets have an error, and that Cano, who doesn't make many errors, makes one here. And now it's JT Riddle, the runners on first and second. So JT Riddle is a lefty, he's a shortstop today. I didn't go over the lineup, it's Granderson, Anderson, and Walker, then Castro, Riddle, and Brinson, the center fielder. And the lineup ends up with Wallach, the catcher, Herrera, the right fielder, and Richards, the pitcher. We're looking at the matchup against the lefty. We're looking for the D10. And you can see there that it's a 23. So we're looking at the lefty matchup 23 versus uh, it's going to be a 20 to 25 is to the third baseman. Third baseman is J.D. Davis, who's a 4. So infield 12 minus 4 is an 8. We roll an 8, so it will be read off of Riddle. We're going to add the 2D6. It's a 4. And that's going to be a base hit. And since it's off the batter card, we could try to score. We're going to roll one die to see. 
If it's less than 10, I don't have to check. And it is, so he scores. And Castro is going to try to go to third. And he makes it to third. So first and third RBI single game is tied here versus the Grom. That's going to be an unearned run, by the way. And uh, up comes Lewis Brinson. So Brinson bats righty. So we're looking at the right side matchup. Let's roll some dice. Game is tied at one here in the bottom of the first. The runner's on first and the third, two outs. And that's going to be a 70 versus a righty. So that's going to be a pitcher batter matchup. We're at plus two. That's a seven plus two. Yep, that's going to be a fastball, so it's a 10 versus a pitcher mat. 15 minus 10 is a 5. We roll a 15, so it will be, most likely, it will be a strikeout. It's a fastball from DeGrom at 100 miles an hour, and a 7 will be a strikeout to retire the side. So that run that scored is not charged to, to DeGrom because of the error by Cano with two outs, and the game is tied. The Marlins pick up a run on two hits, and we go to the top of the second. That's an inning of 4th Street Baseball. This is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV, and continue watching this game and learn how to play 4th Street Baseball. Take care.